And certainly the hottest topic yeah. right now is James Harden and Joel Embiid with the 76ers. People are ready to crown them. They're like, go ahead and give them the Larry O'Brien trophy. Yeah, it's, you know, I love what I've seen. I mean, it, let, take it for what it is. They've only had a couple games. They haven't, you know, exactly played the, the murderer's row of the NBA. But <laughs> obviously the high pick and roll with Harden and Embiid looks really good. They've surrounded them with shooters. Tyrese Maxey looks very comfortable, you know, yeah. running the point, but playing more off as a two actually once he gives the ball to hard and run that pick and roll my concern for the sixers is their bench there's not a lot of depth there you've got cork miles coming off the bench you got niang coming off the bench nobody's sitting there going oh yeah cork miles is in the game finally we're we're in good shape i don't love their depth i don't love the fact that they lost andre drummond who even though the nets are struggling drummond was a nice piece and now instead of that they have paul Millsap, and i don't think Millsap fits in very well so i still think the sixers Maybe the best in the East. Miami probably has something to say about that because they've looked really good. But certainly teams are not looking forward to facing this high pick and roll with with Harden and Embiid, especially with a Harden <laughs> that looks motivated to play. Yeah, uh, I think he's ready to just he's happy to be back in back in the talk. And what I'm loving, first of all, is like I'm I'm glad the NBA is back to the dynamic duo. The super teams have proven not to work, whether it's been injuries or people getting older. It just doesn't work out. I'm glad to see the like the dynamic duo with some hot rookies kind of being like the mix because that's when I think mm -hmm. about the NBA for for decades. That's what I think about is all right, you, you got you know Magic and Kareem and, and Jordan and Pippen and you know those kind of duos. I'm, I'm hoping the the edge of the super teams is done. So with all the moves, right? And by the way, the 76ers are trying to get DeAndre Jordan. Uh, because I think yeah. he's done with the Lakers. So maybe that'll help the Drummond woes, but who are you looking for? Let's talk about who you see in the finals. And then let's talk about this MVP race. Because all of a sudden it's starting to get pretty interesting. So finals West, I still have the Suns. I think the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the West. Once they get Chris Paul back, Paul's going to miss six to eight weeks with that fracture in his thumb. Obviously, the team looks a little different without him, you know, more Devin Booker running the point. But I think they're with Chris Paul, him running with Aiton and Booker. It's, they're darn near unstoppable. They got depth on the bench. They got shooters. Um, if there's a team to upset and maybe make a run, Memphis is hot right now. And I'm telling you, John Morant <laughs> might be the most exciting player to watch. Uh, I don't know what that what he's got. I, in the I last love, 10 years. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you add in Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson, they've got a really solid squad. But I still think the Suns are the class of the West. East is a little more murky. I'm going to wait to see on the Sixers to see how they mesh going forward. I think two games, and I think one of them is against the Timberwolves, who are one of the worst teams out there. Like, I'm not going to, like, crown them champs quite yet. Um, I really like Miami. I think as long as they stay healthy, that's their key. Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, OG, and like the, 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 that team is tough. And, you know, if Duncan Robinson can find a shot because he is so streaky, they're tough to play because they can score from outside. They score from inside. Um, I think the Heat are probably the class, but the East to me, I don't know about you, Scott. The East is murky because I feel like there are Real three or murky. four teams that can make that run. Yeah, I mean, the West is clear. Obviously, you know, when you look at Phoenix, what they've done on the road this year it tells you alone, like this is this is a team that's meant to go through the playoffs, right? And perhaps have yeah. short series and not and not drag things out and possibly should have already won themselves, you know, uh, a couple of titles there with Chris Paul. And it just shows, man, how good CP3 is uh, and what kind of impact he has made for that team. We'll see how they do with them out, you know, if they if they can you know, sort of maintain out there. Uh, but for me, uh, you made me to go first on the picture. You you started off. Who, who's in your finals? I heard I heard all this yabber yabber yatter, but I never got down to this team versus this team. Who do you got? Uh, I'll take I'll take the Suns and I'll take you know early in the season I was high on the Bulls, but I think the Heat. I think it's gonna be Suns Heat. Um, the one question mark. What does Golden State look like once Draymond Green gets back? Because that team looks kind of out of place without mm -hmm. him, but he's supposed to be back soon. He's the one thorn in Phoenix's side that I'm worried about. But I'll take I'll take the Suns in the heat right now. You got, uh, you got any dark horses? Um, East, uh, I, I think the East has the most dark horses. I feel like I just got this feeling about Chicago. Levine, mm. Io's really come on nicely in that point DeRo guard DeRozan's role. just going crazy. I mean, it's just... DeRozan's going wild. Vucevic is a beast in the middle. The, my one concern with Chicago is I don't love how they run their offense. You get a lot of iso ball with DeRozan, and while he can put up 40, 
if he's not shooting well, your offense is dead. I don't love it, but um, I think with the, the amount of weapons Chicago has, they certainly can make a run deep in the East. All right, here's my pick. I'll, I'll, I'll throw some explanation out there. I got Warriors and Bucks. That's that's gonna be that's that's my pick right wow. now. For some reason, I just feel like Steph Curry is on a mission, right? And you're right. If and this this goes for you could say this about a lot of teams. If they could get healthy, right? If they could get their players back, right? Um, I just don't see any of these playing teams making a run, right? And I'm I was off this Lakers team from the beginning, right? It's just like. We've seen this happen before where you try to take a bunch of stars that are past their prime. Tip of the cap to LeBron, even though I'm I'm not a big LeBron fan, as, as people know. I'm a Jordan guy. But, I mean, the numbers that he's put up with all the absences of AD and just Russell Westbrook can't throw it in the ocean right now. But I, for some reason, I feel like Steph Curry is on a mission. I think the popular pick is Phoenix. I think they're the most prepared for it, especially if Chris Paul comes back and he's and he's good to go. I just love that no one's talking about Milwaukee and Giannis is just dominant. The team is built to be in the playoffs. If I got a dark horse, I think I, I, for some reason I like Memphis. Uh, even when uh, yeah. John Morant missed those 12 games, they held pace. And by the way, watch out for the nuggets. If they can get some of their people back. Speaking of it, can we get some people yeah. back? Uh, the Joker has been doing a great job and maybe putting together an MVP season. And I think that's a nice segue into who you got for MVP, you know, you don't have to give me the, you know, the number one, number one, but who do you got at least in the conversation? I mean, for me, I think you're looking, if I was taking one name off the top of my head to me right now, John Moran is not just the best player in the league. He's the most exciting player in the league and he's the most valuable to their team. And I think that is the definition of MVP is I think without John Morant, this Grizzlies team isn't sniffing the playoffs and they're right now a top four team. Yeah. And I think that's, what's crazy about what John Moran has been able to do. I saw a stat where I think he has 20 games of 20 plus or more paint points standing at six foot three. Like he is a beast inside. He, he makes more plays than anybody. I know there are a lot of great players out there. Obviously I'm in Phoenix. I love Devin Booker. I love what Booker has been able to. Steph Curry has been doing amazing things, but yep. my money right now, John Morant is the most valuable player to any team in the NBA. I, I mean, when's the last time you've seen somebody that can make a 34 foot jump shot and dunk on seven footers. It just, that's a combo you don't see too often, especially at just a little bit over six feet. Um, He's got a little Allen Iverson to him too. He's just he's just a human highlight yeah. machine. And remember, uh, you know this team is kind of built like that Philly team was for Iverson, where it's like, all right, John Moran's going to run the show, but we picked up some nice players that can, you know, let Ja be Ja. So I would love to see the Grizzlies there. I would love to see John Morant um, as the MVP. I think Joel Embiid's got a real chance at it if he can maintain the same stat line with Harden. Right. If he's still dominant with, let's be honest, I'll just say it with the ball hog that is James Harden um, yep. and Harden seems fine. Just dishing it to him. So if if Harden is wanting to share the sugar. Right. And, and as long as they keep winning, and I think Harden has always been willing to pass on a team that's winning. Um, yeah. Uh, Joel Embiid is probably the leader in the clubhouse, to be honest. Well, and you, and you can't count out guys like. Luka Doncic, who, you know, that team trades away. Kristaps Porzingis, suddenly Luka sure, is I the only Luka. large European man in the middle. I mean, he's unbelievable. You talk about the Bucks, Giannis, I, pound for pound, I don't care when if Kevin Durant is healthy. I think Giannis is the hardest player in the NBA to stop. He's just if you took an Milwaukee absolute monster. And, and put them in Los Angeles, Giannis would be the MVP almost every year. It's because sure. they're in Milwaukee 100%. and they're in the East. And, like, yeah. let's be honest, even though the Heat are, are you know, one of the best teams in the East – if it flashes up on your screen, Milwaukee versus Miami this weekend, I'm like, yeah, I got, you know, I don't know. I'll probably go to, I'll probably go to Lowe's or Home Depot, maybe Bed Bath and Beyond if there's time. You know, like I, it's not, it's not must see TV, um, and that's that's the problem you get with some of these small markets. And I still consider Miami a, a small market team as well. So the Eastern Conference desperately needs Philly to be good. For decades, they've needed the Knicks to return. If Chicago could somehow keep some sort of consistency, I think the East will, you know, finally start to get uh, a little tip of the cap. You know, like, I, I mean, DeRozan's doing these crazy things that only uh, some of the greatest players in the NBA have done with, you know, eight plus games over 35 points. But it's still like, okay, 
I mean, they were first for like the first time in a long time that Chicago has been first at this point uh, in the Eastern Conference. Certainly Miami jumped them real like real quick. And, you know, they had like a game lead the next thing, you know, Miami has like a two game lead. But um, yeah, I would love I would love to see Ja win it. Um, of course, we haven't had really like a true center win anything in a long time. Uh, a long I would time. have to I would have to go look and see the last. It had to be Shaq. Shaq had to be the last true center that won the MVP. Oh boy, uh, NBA. Well, Jokic is technically a center, but uh, he plays. Yeah, so many okay, games. okay, he, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see that. Hey, he's a point yeah, forward. I for think me, the but, last yeah. true center you're looking is 03. Tim Duncan won it, and yeah, like I somebody's, mean, and he's more of a power forward too. So like someone that's got like their back to the basket. We haven't seen like a pick so and roll. Shaq in 2000. Yeah, yeah. So so Shaq in it's 2000, few and far in between. David Robinson in '95, Hakeem in '95. It's like a running back or defensive player winning MVP in the NFL, right? Yeah. Like it's a quarterback thing. It's a point guard, shooting guard kind of league. And um, you know, I, I, let's be honest: if Memphis makes the finals and Ja wins the MVP, how would that be for a small market team? That'd be nuts. I mean, and that, that's what's wild about the uh, the East is like you look at the teams that are competing out here, you know, Miami, Chicago, Milwaukee, Boston. Like these are young teams. Boston's got this duo. Jason with Tatum, Tatum is fantastic. He's yeah, he's he's fantastic. Yeah. And like, I mean, then you got, you know, it, 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 you know, you were talking about super teams. That's what's what's fun is I feel like did Milwaukee was Milwaukee the one that broke super teams was Milwaukee with Giannis. <laughs> but I mean, again, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, you're not sitting there going, oh, wow, look at the super team. Yeah. You know, and but, you know, they, I, but both of those players, like Middleton, is just a sniper, right? Yeah. And that's what he does very well. And Drew Holiday is one of the best defensive point guards. I mean, you put him on another point guard, he causes all kind of problems. I mean, ask yeah. ask CB three, you know, ask CP three and all these. I mean, it's he's a he's a problem. And they uh, have but you're right. Bobby I, mean, I mean, yeah, come on, you're Bobby right. Porter's but laser. like. You know, they don't have three all-stars on their team, right? Right. I mean, that's just that's just kind of how it goes. Let's talk about the NFL. We got the draft just around the corner.